Hello friends and welcome back to the studio. Y'all have been asking us for videos about video editing, so today is going to be the first of a new mini-series in which I'm going to teach you how I edit audio using Final Cut Pro. The other video topics in this series so far are going to be how to edit audio between two people or stereo audio, and also how to add background music. If you have any more topics relating to audio in mind, let me know in the comments and I might add to the list. Today's video is going to be pretty simple. These are all of the audio editing techniques that I do to every single video before I release it. Disclaimer, I am hardly an audio professional, but I do make videos for YouTube and I make some vlogs, so my goal with audio editing is not to make perfect sound, but just to make it better than it originally was. So I'm going to open up Final Cut Pro. I do have a relatively new version. This is version 10.41. And I also have some sample clips queued up to demonstrate all of the techniques that I'm going to be talking about. When you first open up Final Cut, you want to make sure that your audio meters are displayed. Those will show up on the bottom right hand corner of your timeline. If they're not there, then you can display them by going up to Window, show in workspace and make sure that audio meters has a check mark next to it. So the first example I'm going to play for you is a little travel vlog that was shot with a GoPro Hero 8 with no external microphone. Along those lines, this whole audio editing technique can be applied no matter what kind of camera you shot your video with. All that matters is that you're using Final Cut as your editing software. So as I play this clip back for you, pay attention to those audio meters on the right hand side of the timeline. How are you feeling? Amazing. <laughs> you I give a little like, waterfall buddy next yeah, to you. Yeah, I do. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> When it comes to dialogue audio or where someone is speaking, I like my audio levels to be between negative 6 and negative 12 decibels. If you pay attention to that audio meter as the clip is playing back, you'll see that my audio levels are right where I want them. If for some reason you want to change those audio levels, then it's really simple. All you do is head over to your clip, hover your mouse over to this line here, and you can just drag it down or drag it up depending on how you want your audio levels to change. If you want more precise control, then just hold down the command key as you're making your adjustments and moving it up or down will move the audio by one decibel. So the next thing I do with my audio is apply a limiter. A limiter allows you to bring up the levels of your audio without allowing the audio to clip. What is audio clipping? Well, very basically, it's when your audio starts to break up or sound distorted. It's usually caused when your subject is too loud and your microphone is too sensitive. If you have clipped or peaked audio, it's extremely hard to recover, so the best way to get around that is to re-record your audio. So to avoid audio clipping as you're filming, it's best to monitor your audio and also to lower the sensitivity of your microphone before recording. So if your audio clipped or peaked, then once you import that footage into Final Cut, you'll see that the audio levels are yellow and red. If that's the case, you might want to consider re-recording your video and fixing the audio. But since we don't have to worry about that, let's get into how to apply the limiter to these video clips. So within Final Cut, go over to the Effects button and give it a click. And then down in the search bar, type in limiter. We're going to drag that effect to our clip and then go over to the right hand panel here and scroll down until you see this limiter area and click on this icon here. You're gonna see a bunch of different settings here, so let's talk about what each of them mean. First of all, we have gain. Gain increases the level of the input signal. So if you're first getting started, you might wanna set your gain at something like 20 and just play back your clip. And again, watch those audio meters and see if your audio is falling between that negative six and negative 12 decibel frame. Gradually lower the gain until your audio falls within that range. How are you feeling? Amazing. <laughs> you give a little like... waterfall buddy next yeah, to you. Yeah, I do. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> So for me, I usually set my gain at about plus seven. The next setting here is release. Release is how long it takes for the limiter to stop processing after the volume falls below the output level. So release is expressed in milliseconds, and for me, I tend to have mine set at 250 to 350 milliseconds. Next, we have output level. Output level is the maximum output for your audio. So basically, we're telling the limiter that if the audio gets above this number, then reduce the audio so it doesn't exceed this number. In my case, I usually have my output level set at negative three decibels. 
Next, we have look ahead. This is how far ahead to analyze the audio. A higher number will make the limiter apply the reduction before you get to the maximum level, resulting in a smoother transition. In general, for dialogue, we only want the limiter to kick in exactly when we need it. We don't want it to happen before we need it. So I usually leave the look ahead at the default number of two milliseconds. The final setting we have here is mode. When I'm editing dialogue, I usually like to change this over to legacy because it allows us to apply soft knee. Soft knee helps make your audio sound smoother when the limiter kicks in. So here's what it sounds like after I have the limiter applied. Then I'm gonna play it back without the limiter applied and let me know if you can hear the difference. How are you feeling? Amazing. <laughs> you give a little like... waterfall buddy next yeah, to you? <laughs> Oh, it's so good. <laughs> How are you feeling? Amazing. <laughs> you give a little like... waterfall buddy next yeah, to you? Yeah, I do. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> and here's another example in an isolated area where the sound is more controlled without a lot of background noise. If I ever want to copy the limiter and apply it to another clip, all I have to do is hover over to the clip where I have the limiter applied and just hit Command C to copy and then go over to my clip where I want it applied, and then hit Command Shift V. And here in the dialog box, I'm gonna select only apply my limiter effect and my volume. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know again in the comments if you have any questions or feedback, and I will see you in the next video. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know again in the comments if you have any questions or feedback, and I will see you in the next video. So after applying the limiter effect, there's one more audio effect that I tend to apply to my clips, and that is noise reduction. So to apply that, we're gonna click on the clip here and then go over to the sound panel, and we're gonna hit the noise removal checkbox. You can probably see that right after I clicked noise removal that the audio levels change quite a bit, and that is that noise reduction kicking in. Now by default, the noise removal kicks in at 50%, but this is usually a lot higher than you want it to be. If you have too much noise removal applied, then your audio is gonna sound tinny, or it's just not gonna sound very natural. So you might want a little bit of noise to exist, especially if you're out in the open. Like in this case, we have some naturally flowing water nearby, so we don't want all of that noise to go away. We wanna preserve some of it. So for me, I usually have my noise removal setting down at, you know, between 10 to 20 percent. But play around with it and see what works for you. How are you feeling? Amazing. <laughs> you give a little like... waterfall buddy next yeah, to you? Yeah, Oh, it's so good. <laughs> How are you feeling? Amazing. <laughs> you I give a little like... waterfall buddy next yeah, to you? Yeah, I do. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> So the final bit of audio editing that I tend to do to my clips is to apply crossfades. Whenever you go through and edit your video, if you make cuts, which you probably will do to cut out pieces that you don't want, then typically there's going to be a bit of a pop between your clips when it's transitioning from one to the other. I'll play you an example right here. <laughs> Trying to make landfall. Yeah, they're landing. Hear that little pop between the clips? There's a super easy way to fix that. It's actually now a shorthand command that you can easily apply in Final Cut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the two clips and then we're just gonna hit Option T. <laughs> the other way you can do this is to select the clips, go up to Modify, Adjust Audio Fades, and then just hit Crossfade. Trying to make landfall. Yeah, they're landing. Sounds a lot smoother, doesn't it? Well, that's all I have for you today. These are the quick and easy things that I do to my audio to enhance it before I export my videos. I have a few other quick tip videos coming up in the coming weeks. One to teach you how to edit two-person audio or stereo audio, and another about how to add background music to your audio. So stay tuned for those videos. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or have ideas for other quick tip videos to do in the future. And thank you for watching. See you next week.